We need the encouragement of being together as one body and even more so as we eagerly await the day when the Lord will return. Well, a very warm welcome to a brand new series of Be Encouraged. We want to thank you so much to those of you who've written in, those of you who've sent uh, good wishes, and we look forward to a new series now. And uh, we're here on the A14. But anyway, before that, this week, we have a lot of exciting things. So over to Jan. Yes, so this week we have uh, some ordinary people who have extraordinary faith. We'll see how that works out. We have someone who presented a Bible to the Queen. And we visit Truckfest at Peterborough, the largest truck festival in the UK. Which is why we're here on the A14. This is a bridge over the A14 called the Golden River uh, locally in Suffolk. We have no motorways, but this might as well be. Uh, we actually live not far from here, about five miles away, so we thought a good place to come with a view of today's uh, topics. Yes, and it runs from Birmingham right the way through to Felixstowe, which of course is the biggest container port, and that's in that direction. Just look at all these trucks behind us, and uh, apparently there are about uh, half a million uh, involved in the transport industry in the UK. So do you ever think when you're down on the road and it's rather challenging to be amongst these lorries as you're driving, do you ever think about the drivers in those cabs? They spent hours in their cabs and they spent days away from their family. We wanted to ask who's looking after these people spiritually and who's telling them the good news about Jesus? So how often are you out on the road and what sort of trucking do you do? Um, we'll leave on a Monday morning early hours and get home Friday night or Saturday morning. And do you go abroad or is it all in the UK? Not anymore, did abroad for 18 years, now I stay in the UK. Phil, tell us what Glory Road means to you. Um, soon I, before we were married, we stop at Dartford Truck Stop. We met a lady called Anne Towns. We didn't know she was with Glory Road. And we got talking to her and we invited her to our wedding. Unbeknown to us, she prayed for us and that we would become part of a Christian movement. And uh, after we got married, we joined a free church in Heathfield, where we lived at the time, and um, she invited us to a um, to Cranfield for a uh, truck fest there, where we met other truck truck drivers, which introduced me to Glory Road. At the time, I wasn't a Christian. Sue was, but I wasn't. And that's what brought me at all. Well, it's good to see you, and thanks very much for sharing with us. Bless you. Thanks. That testimony from Phil was taking a truck fest at Peterborough. We really enjoyed going to truck fest and uh, seeing all these mighty lorries. It's just amazing the way they paint them up and, and all the things that they do to them. But Phil came to know the Lord Jesus through Glory Road. And I wanted to introduce you to Keith, who heads up Glory Road. A couple of years ago, Keith came to India with me to visit the polio work that we have out there with young people. He was amazing and he identified so much with our boys and they with him. He was a real encouragement and you know to take him on the aeroplane and then eight hours on the train in India, I was just staggered at his endurance. He's a grand chap. We met Keith again at Truckfest and he showed us the work that they're doing at Glory Road. Hi Hiya, Keith. Hiya, Julie. Great to see you too. The vision that was really given to me um, for me to start the ministry, I got involved with helping um, uh, an event, uh, well, a Christian truckers fellowship, really, through a truck driver at the church I used to go to. And um, he knew I was involved with publishing and graphics and asked if I could help do their newsletter. And over three or four years, I gradually realised how big a harvest field um, the transport industry is, with over 500,000 truck drivers throughout the UK. And I was just praying to the Lord for someone to take it on, because there was, as I say, half a million drivers and their families and the people involved with them 
that had little opportunity to go to church because they were working 60, 65 hours a week and when they get home the last thing they want to do is to go to church. So, uh, But they needed the gospel like we all do and uh, I was really praying and praying and praying for someone to come along and uh, one day the like the big lottery symbol the big finger came down and said it's you and uh, I argued with the Lord for three to three and a half months saying it was a crazy idea I didn't know anything about driving or truckers or I wouldn't know where to start but it it wouldn't go up away and in the end I accepted I said okay Lord I'll do it what do I do now because I literally didn't have any idea and uh, the first thing I called a, a, a Christian driver I, I knew through this Christian uh, Drivers Fellowship and we got together and uh, I spoke to him about the, the vision and what could be done and, and things like this and because of my experience in publishing and, and marketing um, I said to the Lord oh we can do this and do that to, that to raise funds and the Lord said no. He said, I'll sort the funds out, you sort the ministry out. And I said, well, we can't do it without money, Lord. He said, never ask for money. So I never, ever have. And we're now going to be 10 years old in January. And the Lord has provided this vehicle, another main vehicle like this, all the finances to keep two big vehicles on the road, uh, to keep the website going and so on. And... Uh, the money literally comes in as and when it's needed. Over those 10 years, um, again, the Lord keeps the books on these things, but I would imagine the drivers we know, 20 to 30 drivers have, have given their lives to the Lord in that time. Some of them actually in their cabs, sleeping overnight, and we've spoken to them on the phone and talked them into a, to what they have to do, and they've actually said the the, the prayer over the um, over the phone, and at first I I asked the Lord whether you could do this, <laughs> whether you could ask someone to say a prayer over the phone, and He said, "Well, you never know. It may be their last day, so it's the same thing as meeting people in the street." We have um, uh, a series of book stands that uh, give away. Again, we give everything away: Bibles, CDs, Christian newspapers mostly testimony, Christian testimony books that the drivers could relate to and um, it varies but at the moment it's um, six or seven uh, uh, book stands in truck stops and again we've really been, been blessed. We started as a trial putting Bibles out on the book stands and within days these two or three Bibles disappeared and we gradually realised that if we were going to do this, we would need a lot of Bibles. And we prayed for a thousand Bibles. And to date, the Lord has given us over 1,500. And these have all gone out to drivers. So there are now 1,500 Bibles in cabs on the road. It's great to be standing here with all these lorries because my first job was on the 1st of March in 1965. I worked for British Road Services as a traffic clerk. Anyway, talking about those Bibles being given away, we managed to catch up with a Gideon from Bury St Edmunds, which is just that way, about five miles down the road. And amazingly, the uh, chairman of the branch had actually presented Her Majesty the Queen with a Bible on the 60th anniversary of the Gideons. Here in Bury St Edmunds, uh, in February 2009, I read in the Bury Free Press that the Queen was coming to Bury. And we thought it would be a good idea to ask if we could actually present the Bible to the Queen. So I asked our head office if any plans had been uh, agreed to, to do this, and they said no. And I said, they said we could write to the Queen and ask her if it was possible. Although they did say that don't be disappointed if she says no. I wrote to the Queen and sadly I didn't have a reply. So when the Queen came on the Maundy Thursday, Marie and I went down in to outside the Athenaeum and waited for her to come and we waved to her as she went into the Athenaeum and when it was all over I wrote to her again and I told her how disappointed we were that we weren't able to present Your Majesty with a copy of the Bible in our 
60th year, which we were celebrating that year. Two weeks later, I had a telephone call from Buckingham Palace to say they were very sorry, but in fact, the Queen had received both the letters that I'd written to her and she had agreed to accept a copy of the Bible whilst she was here in Berish and Edmonds, but sadly, the Deputy Private Secretary of the Queen hadn't made the arrangements with, with us so that it wasn't possible. Marie and I received an invitation later in the year to go to a garden party at Buckingham Palace and present Her Majesty with a Bible, which we did. And it was absolutely delightful occasion. Really, really lovely. And the Queen said to us as we met her, I'm very sorry about the mix up in Bury St Edmunds. And uh, we said, that was perfectly all right, Your Majesty. We forgave you for that. Thank you for inviting us to your garden party. And the Duke of Edinburgh said, don't you think we have enough Bibles here? And Marie said, well, I'm sure you do, Your Royal Highness, but this is a very special Bible. We're Gideons and we give this, this, we're celebrating 60 years of Gideon ministry. And I said to Her Majesty, I said, Your Majesty, your father would be so pleased to see what we're doing here today. And she said, oh, and I had a little copy of a little testament. I, oh, I have, yes, I have. This, I pulled this out of my pocket, this little testament, and I said, your father wrote a little message in here, Your Majesty. This is very similar to the little testaments that we give to the children in school. And this is what your father wrote. I commend to you the reading of this book. For centuries, the Bible has been a wholesome and strengthening influence in our national life. And it behoves us in these momentous days to turn with renewed faith to this divine source of comfort and inspiration. And the Queen said, could I have a copy? And I said, Your Majesty, I've put one in your little Bible. And I had put one in her Bible. And now, when we go into schools, we, we have to say to the children in the schools, you don't actually have to accept a copy of this if you don't want one. But before you decide, I'd like to just tell you a little story. And I tell her that little story about what happened to the Queen and how the King had written that message in there. And, and I we tell them that if you take a copy today, that same message is in fact in that testament. And we stick that message in the testaments and we give them to the children and they are so pleased to accept a copy. And that's been a wonderful fillip to our ministry in the schools because that's by far our biggest, as I think I've said before, our biggest uh, ministry that we do. I joined the Gideons uh, quite a while ago and I just love it because it's a chance, isn't it, Jan, to give away scripture. And, you know, it leads people to a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And that's what's so important, isn't it, that we actually get people to be into relationship with God. Now, it was so noisy on that bridge, wasn't it? And we were having to shout to get above the traffic noise. So we're actually here in Woolpit and uh, we found this wonderful tea room. Now, this used to be the main A45, which then became the A14. So very interesting that uh, actually lorries and things, anything going between Ipswich and Bury St Edmunds actually came along this street um, here in, in Woolpit, just amazing. And I can remember uh, how it used to be quite crowded. So what they did, they built a bypass here um, quite a while ago. But when they built the bypass, what was so interesting was that they knew when they built it that it was out of date. And then later they had to do uh, a dual carriageway bypass how much in our Christian life do we just do something enough to achieve what we need to instead of what we know God's calling us to? And, uh, you know, that's a very interesting thing, isn't it? It is, yes. And I would also say, how are you at adapting to change? Ah. Because sometimes, you know, we, we need to make changes in our lives. We need to move on. And God perhaps has a different season for us. Uh, it reminds me of the scripture that uh, Jesus said you don't put new wine into old bottles. We need to be those new wineskins if the Lord is going to move us on to new things. So don't be worried about change. Rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Go the way he wants you to go and he will just take us to that new place. So for example there used to be horses and carts coming through here and then uh, obviously there were, there were steam uh, lorries and, and steam traction engines. And today it's a very different story on that A14, isn't it? It certainly is. But you know, you mentioned steam traction engines. There's a steam uh, traction engine near here, which is called Faith. 
and we wanted to track it down for quite some while. Well, near Woolpit, there is the Woolpit steam, and we found it there. <laughs> Yeah, what, what's in the name? Faith? Well, I, funny old fella, I happen to love him up there, so I've got to give it a name. Do and you know I'll... what? We do too. <laughs> really? Because I love our dear Lord with all my heart and soul. That's why. There's That's no, fine. no other reason. That's fantastic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the engine. Well, it's his 1916 engine, and that stood, uh, that when they finished using, that stood 16 years on the side of the road at Lavenham. And then uh, I came along and uh, bought it as a wreck, and uh, I restored it, and I've, re I've been steaming with it now for 46 years. That is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So. I've got the hang on it now. I reckon you have, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful machine. Yeah. And the smell's good too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. But I tell you what, it's also a good parable, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is, you really. You found it all broken down, you restored it, and now yeah. it's doing well. I suppose you could put another bit of a parable for that. You could turn around and say, like the, for people, I was lost, but Jesus found me found the sheep that went astray, put his loving arms around me, brought me back into his way. I suppose that's about the best sort of syllable I think that we could possibly uh, talk about in regards to the engine as, as well as myself. Yeah. God bless you. Interestingly enough, the vehicle that Glory Road Ministries use on the road is called Faith 5. On the, on the first panel of the bus is the Glory Road Ministry symbol, which is on a cross shape, but it's the sort of shape you get on a, on a map when you're looking at a, at a road. And below that is the scripture that launched the ministry, which is Acts 8.29, where the God tells Philip to go alongside the chariot and speak to the people in the chariot. If we needed to give the gospel to truck drivers, we had to go to them on the road in their trucks, and that is what we do. The picture on the, the rear panel of the vehicle just shows a, a truck going along which represents drivers, um, the, the 500,000 drivers there are in the UK, uh, just going about their, their daily job. As we come round to the rear of the vehicle, it shows a, a motorway with two trucks on, and um, these have got question marks on the back, which we're showing really metaphorically that uh, drivers go along their, their journey every day, their journey in life, not really knowing which direction to go in. And on the back, the, you see a motorway symbol, and below it it says which way is your life going which is a, a question all of us have really got to answer and the motorway sign gives you the options of hard slog nowhere easy street or dead end and these are the options you've got really if you haven't got Jesus in your life as you saw on the on the back of the bus the two lorries with a question mark on were going towards the the road which actually comes around the corner of the bus and uh, goes onto a road which is a suspension bridge through the clouds and the, and the suspension bridge is supported by the Glory Road Ministry sign and so we're trying to depict the drivers that, that meet up with Glory Road we can lead them towards Christ which is obviously represented by this superb picture of um, Jesus on the cross and the, the road goes straight towards Jesus and it's a simple slogan on the side, not particularly scriptural, but it says, I did it for you. And this is designed when the bus is going along the road, especially motorways, that most drivers uh, looking at it from the opposite side of the road only have about two or three seconds to, to read what it says. So we get the, the message over very quickly with incredible impact with the artwork. And this was all supplied to us by a uh, an airbrush artist called Andy Scott who isn't a Christian and he supplied it at no charge at all which was a huge blessing to the ministry 
and this sort of artwork commercially on the trucks around us would be eight to ten thousand pounds to actually have it put on so it's a, a tremendous blessing to the ministry Well, it's great to be here in Walford at this tea shop. We really enjoyed that cup of tea, didn't we? We did. Um, but we've had to clear the table because it's time to close. But we're going to carry on talking to you about what Keith was saying about the, the roundabout. Uh, what were the four um, areas off the roundabout? Because I forget. Dead End, Hard Slog, mm -hmm. Easy Street and Nowhere. Going Nowhere, yeah. And for so many people today, aren't they? They're just going nowhere. They're not understanding life. And actually... To understand where you're going, you do need that, that relationship with God because God made man to have relationship. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world and Jesus died on the cross to restore us back into relationship with him. And so, if you've got Jesus in your life, if you've said, Lord, I, I would like you to be Lord of my life, I want to follow you and I'm sorry for the way I've done things my way, I regret it, I repent, I'm saying sorry, I want to follow you. When you do that, Jan, it makes such a difference, doesn't it? Because there's, a, there's like a, an inner peace comes in, you get direction because God promises that he will give you his Holy Spirit to direct and to show you the way, you know, and, and it's fantastic. So if you haven't done it, please, for your own sake, uh, have that ticket to heaven. But, you know, the most important thing is to be in relationship with God now. It's not about whether you're going to heaven or not. That's part of the deal. That's what God gives you. But the fact is that it changes your whole life immediately you ask Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. It certainly does. And also, once you are a Christian, you can always ask the Lord for guidance in matters. And each one of us needs guidance in our lives. We have decisions to make. You know, we might say, well, I'm getting, getting to a roundabout in my life. I'm getting to a crossroads. Which way do I go? And it tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Yeah. And it's very true, he does. He shows us which way he wants us to go. And it's always the best for us. With that roundabout, it's uh, a bit like a maze, isn't it? You just don't know which way to go. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in because unless you have God's Holy Spirit, it's like being in a maze and not knowing which way to turn or what to do. How many times have you said, oh God or oh Lord, crying out his name in vain? Well, actually we're told not to do that. But for those of us that have a relationship with God and know that he exists, that's exactly what he tells us to do. You know, and often we do that and we feel like he's not there because wrongly, when we have trials and problems, we expect him to lift us out of them. And sometimes we, we seem to think that having a Christian life means that we won't get any problems, but that isn't what happens. If we call on his name, what he does is take us through problems. And then at the end of it, we can look back and see where God was in all of it, helping us come to the other end. You know, there are times in my life, through situations I've been through, where, like this tree, I felt bare, I felt withered and quite ugly. But with God's help and strength, I have learned to blossom again. Now is the time to trust. When the way
We're looking for good stories and things that we can use to encourage other people. So if you do, then please contact us. Be encouraged. British Christian TV, Buxall, Stowmarket, IP143DX. Telephone 01449 736 736. Email is beencouraged at britishchristian.tv. The lady in the tea shop has just produced this amazing poster of the event that they held at the church yesterday. So we're coming back here next week to see just what they've been doing with Egyptians all over the churchyard. <laughs> Honestly. It was. Yeah. And uh, we're just going over to Mac now for a quick flip through the Bible. Now this actually is not the Holy Bible. But I want to show you something now. If you don't take one of these little testaments today, or if you take one and you don't read it, it'll be a book just like that. Okay? But if you take it and you just have a little look inside it and you read it once, it'll become a book like that. But if you take it and you read it regularly, and there is a little plan in there how you can read it regularly, it will then become a book like that. That's amazing, isn't it? And it will help you all your life, I promise you. Wow, thank you, Mac. That's very true. And we hope you'll join us again next week. So see you then. And remember, if you have a story to share with us, please send it in. Goodbye. God bless. Bye.